As you know, we can't see RF, but we can see the effect of it. So take a look at this, see what you think. This is my YouTube antenna. Hi, this is Jim W6LG, your ham radio Elmer here on YouTube. Welcome to my radio room in Rockland, California. This is a one-to-one -one SWR. So that was 100 watts into um, my YouTube antenna with a one-to-one -one SWR. And uh, let's see if I can switch over to another camera. This is um, what, the, what my antenna looks like. It's a bulb with a number of filaments in it, and uh, it actually, it actually works. So that is my YouTube antenna, and uh, again, with the device I've provided, it uh, it has a one-to-one -one, uh, SWR. So one-to-one -one SWR, 100 watts. The uh, there's a um, 150 feet of RG8X. The transmitter, which is a linear amplifier, is brute force. It puts out 100 watts no matter what. Doesn't care what the SWR is. It continues to put out 100 watts. With that in mind, what happens as the SWR goes up? What happens to my uh, um, S, uh, YouTube? <laughs> what happens to my YouTube antenna? as the SWR climbs. So here we go. Let's find out. This is uh, 1.5 to 1. It's a 2 to 1 SWR. This is uh, uh, 3 to 1, 3 to 1 SWR. This is the 3.6 to 1, 3.6 to 1 SWR. This is uh, 5 to 1 SWR. 8 to 1, 8 to 1 SWR, 8 to 1 SWR. The graphic is a representation of what I came up with over several tests. So it's sort of an average uh, reading that I got during several runs of the video. Um, you may not need a separate SWR meter. You may not want one. Uh, maybe your amplifier has one built in it if you have an amp. If you have an antenna tuner, that may have an SWR meter in it. It's a good thing if it does. Uh, your transceiver uh, has an SWR meter in it. And that may be all that you need. SWR meters became popular in the early 1960s as stores that sold ham radio equipment, like the ones that I worked in um, in the late 60s sold different brands, Calrad, Lafayette, Radio Shack. They all had about the same SWR meter. They were like 995, put it in line, turn the knob, adjust for peak, get the reflected power by flipping a switch. So they became really common in the 1960s and SWR came up as a necessary item to concern. Along those lines, and this is for the A double RL. In the ARL handbook, there's a section called SWR myths. And one of them says, basically, it doesn't matter. And they use an example which is totally bogus. And whoever wrote the article is just full of BS. Um, and it's been carried forward on some YouTube channels as here's an SWR myth. Well, the SWR myth is a myth in and of itself, and that is this. The example cited is at uh, 80 meters and using ladder lines. So what the heck? Uh, there's no feed line loss, so of course you can transmit into a high SWR and the darn thing will work. That doesn't mean you can do the same thing on 10 meters with RG8X and 100, and I used 150 feet in this test. So to suggest that that's a myth for hams to worry about SWR in and of itself is a myth, a BS myth. And it's being carried on lots of YouTube channels of, as, well, you can transmit into a 10 to 1 SWR. Well, you can, 
but you can see how those light bulbs lit up. Along those lines, if you kind of follow that modulation, you can see how hard it is for an SWR watt meter like this one to follow the peaks in wattage. Most SWR meters today are also uh, watt meters. And so you can read a little bit of both and uh, get a good idea about what's going on. Um, you may want one of those, especially one that's peak reading, and there are lots to choose from. Even though MFJ is gone these days, uh, the SWR meters range from, uh, I think the least expensive I saw was $100 and on up to about 1000 um, available on, at places like your favorite Ham Radio Emporium, uh, Ham Radio Outlet, Gigaparts, uh, DX Engineering. They all have several, and many of them carry Daiwa meters. And those are good meters, uh, cross needle, and I'll show you that in just a second. If you want to measure the SWR in another way, there's a real expensive way to do that without transmitting. And that a little guy like this one, this is a Nano VNA. Uh, and I, <laughs> uh, there was a price tag on Amazon of these things and it was six bucks a piece. So I bought three cause that's all they had. Um, don't need three, but the price was right. Uh, so they go up from there. Uh, there are several kinds of nano VNA gizmos, uh, some a little bit more expensive. I think this one is, uh, less than a couple hundred bucks. Uh, gives you the same reading, but it has some other features built into it. My favorite device for measuring SWR not using the transmitter is this guy. And I literally carry this with me whenever I'm doing something, uh, checking an antenna. Maybe in here, maybe out at the antenna. But uh, this um, nano uh, rig expert uh, covers up to 35 megahertz and has a bunch of features in it. Uh, there's also an AA55 that goes to 55 megahertz, so it does six meters. It also has some extra functions. And highly useful devices. I bought that one on sale at Gigaparts. I think it was $230 on sale. This one uh, from Rig Expert uh, goes up to three gigahertz and has a ton of functions in it. Uh, and you can, both of those you can connect to your computer to get some of those readings. If you want a separate SWR meter, there are the kind where the coupler is separate. It's, uh, in this case, the coupler is built into the box. Ones where the coupler is separate allow you to have the coax connected to this guy and it cables, whoops, cables to the um, uh, uh, display device. Uh, this one is um, one out of something I got years ago. I salvaged it. Uh, let me swap to the green screen. And um, this has is a combination watt meter, SWR meter. So the gizmo in the middle, the toroidal core, is, uh, if I get my hand on it, and I don't think I can. That's the watt meter part, and that measures um, uh, forward and reflected. These things on the end are um, measuring SWR, uh, forward and reflected, one each. And the output to, uh, there we go, to the phono jacks. Many SWR watt meters have that kind of device on a cable so you can um, have the indicator box up on top. Indicators and watt meters and those kinds of things Range in price from $1,000 on down. Uh, this one that I'm displaying now is a 7-inch LCD screen. 
It has a bunch of functions built into it. Uh, it can do trapezoid uh, with two couplers, one at the B input to the amplifier, one at the output uh, to display a trapezoid pattern. Uh, does two-tone oscillator, white noise, pink noise, noise noise. Uh, who knows what all is inside the thing. Uh, it works great. It's highly accurate. Uh, the one above that is from the same source, N8LP, Larry Phipps, uh, and it's Telepost, T-E-L-E-P-O-S-T, -E and this is the LP100, which is my favorite SWR meter. I also have um, devices, uh, bird watt meters um, that I have. Uh, same thing, it's even slower to move, it's more heavily damped. Um, and uh, Daiwa meters have a peak reading function. I don't know how accurate it would be. It probably isn't necessary that it be all that accurate, but it'll give you a picture as to what's going on. Why do I have the separate meter? Um, because I want to keep one eye on the output to make sure the amplifier, whichever one I'm using, is working correctly. So I get, uh, there's some things that I watch, grid current on the amplifier and the output of the amplifier through a separate SWR watt meter. And I keep an eye on it. Am I obsessed with SWR? Despite the article in the ARRL handbook, yeah, I sort of am. Want to keep it low. Um, common mode currents. Um, may not come from the SWR, but for those who say it does not come from the output of the transmitter, well, where is that power coming from? Uh, the current that's on the outside of the shield comes from somewhere. It comes from what I'm putting into the coax. Uh, an imbalance at the antenna can create common mode currents, and that's often the case. With respect to feed line, in the test that I did, I used about 150 feet of RG8X at 28 megahertz. The reason for that was obvious. I wanted to show the greatest amount of loss and what I could set up. And that's what I did do. Um, it worked fine. It was The display is fine. Getting back to transmitting into a 16 to 1 or a 10 to 1 SWR, I'm not going to do it. Um, could I get my an, uh, antenna matching device, the homebrew one, to match it? Probably. But to what end? I've got huge coax losses at that point. So I'm not going to do it. To be honest, my huge coax losses would be lower than most because I use a very large diameter coax. Some of my friends use uh, inch and five eighths and then special coax connectors so that what they see at their metering is exactly what's happening. Well, pretty darn close to what's going on at the antenna because their feed line is lossless. Lossless feed lines. I'm using 7 8 inch hard line, so I get a pretty good picture too. So that's my dissertation on SWR and what happens, and you could see the light bulb. Uh, is that a perfect answer? Well, no, but it gives you an idea. I hope you've enjoyed that. If you have, please subscribe. I need that to happen desperately. Um, and uh, if you have a comment, and I'm, many will, I hope so, uh, post it below. Let's talk about it. It's good to discuss this kind of thing, and somebody may say, well, I don't agree, and here's why. And I think it's important to hear that, uh, that argument. Uh, you may gr agree with that person, and that person may have a very good point. So if you have a comment, put it below. Let's do that. Let's talk about it. Keep it civil, but uh, put it below and let's see what happens. Watching the SWR meter from Rockland, California. I'm Jim, W6LG. Thank you very much, 73.